from all the Vikes. Could the Vikings shock everyone and go QB in round one? Maybe. Uh, outside of corner, I don't see any glaring needs. They also just restructured Kirk Cousins' deal and have said a lot of praise for him, so be a little bit surprised if they went that route. I don't think Pickett's a great fit for them in terms of like he's going to be more ready to play right now and they would want to try maybe groom someone. But what if Malik Willis was the pick? Um, I think he could be there. I got my top five QBs up here. Desmond Ritter at three, Matt Corral four, Sam Howell five. None of them would have been a top five QB last year. And in most years, they're more of a QB three. But it's a bad QB class at the top, at least. Some teams that I think could go QB early. I think Carolina's going QB. Unless they trade for Jimmy G, you cannot start Darnold next year, man. The Falcons Seahawks are rebuilding. If they love a guy like Malik Willis, they'll take him otherwise. Wait, don't, don't take a QB. The Saints now have two first-round picks. Don't sleep on them. And Pittsburgh, I think they could get aggressive this year. So how many QBs do you think go in the first round of this year's NFL draft? One, two, three, four? Let me know in the comments section. More corner questions coming in. This one's from Jackson Cortez, Sauce Gardner, or Derek Stingley. If both are available at number 12 for the Vikings, who are you taking? I'm going to take Sauce, and I, I just don't think Ahmad Gardner is going to be there at number 12. I think Stingley's the more likely guy that you could end up getting. But Gardner, to me, is long. He's lanky. He's physical. He brings all the intangibles that you're looking for in a corner. Not that Stingley doesn't, but I think that Stingley might actually have a higher ceiling than Gardner, but Gardner's floor is a little bit lower, and the amount of swings and misses that Minnesota has had at the cornerback position over the past few seasons... I'm going to go with a player who I think is a lock in, in that sauce. From Taylor Holland, probably Tariq Woolen becomes a top 10 QB in three to four years. In general, I will always take the low side on a top 10 player. Woolen's got the traits you want. He's not a great corner right now, though. Like The, the risk you run here is that Tariq Woolen is just the next in a long line of, yeah, he's a great athlete, but he's not a good football player. So I think very low. He has the traits, the size, and length the teams love, but top 10 is a lot to ask for. Uh, Sky Moore, better upside than Christian Kirk? I kind of think so, yeah. I think they could go similar ranges. So I actually I think Moore is a better route runner. Um, but I think like in terms of like impact early on, not that far off. Maybe a bit better, hopefully, for Sky Moore. Uh, Chad Mumuma, perfect team fit. Take a pick. Um, I don't know. Uh, uh, you know, maybe they uh, Denver, I think, could actually be a decent fit for Chad Muma. Uh, Producer Jack's like Vikings in my ear. I'm like, ah, eh, maybe Vikings. They don't, they don't need that. They, they, they don't need a linebacker that early, but maybe, maybe Vikings. Sure, if they, if they, if they are out long term on Kendricks, M Muma could be a fit then. Yeah. From to looks chill videos. Who is the best receiver outside of round one? Um, I don't think George Pickens goes round one. But that's a really good football player. And it's kind of like receiver Derek Stingley, where had the, the career been flipped, he'd be in that top, I think, 15, top 20 conversation. Uh, I love his attitude, by the way. He's such a, such a bully out there, in a good way, I mean. Um, so I, I, I like Pickens a lot there. Um, I'm a big Alec Pierce fan, who I know will be there in round two and maybe round three. I think those are two names. I think guys like a Christian Watson, a Jahan Dotson, Sky Moore are maybe better guys, but I think they have a better chance of going round one than George Pickens does. Andrew Temple, do you think that the way things are going right now when teams don't have the money to pay big players, they just get traded off? So it's not they don't have the money. The Packers wanted to pay Devontae Adams. The Chiefs could have paid Tyreek Hill. They could have paid Amari Cooper. It was that they didn't think the value was right. And in general, that is what teams should do. If you're not going to pay somebody and somebody else will, then trade them and get something back. So I think that is the way things are going, and frankly, it's the way they've gone before. Uh, teams are just a bit more aggressive in trading for those guys than what they might have been in the past. All right, so out of the four teams that y'all see on screen right now, who ends up this 2022 season with the most wins? If you think it's the Tennessee Titans, I want you to go ahead and type T-E-N. Baltimore Ravens, B-A-L. Seattle Seahawks, S-E-A. 
the Pittsburgh Steelers type PIT. The reason why I'm going to go with the Tennessee Titans is because they're in the weakest division. Though the team that I see being the worst on screen is Seattle. Baltimore has the upside with Lamar Jackson. Pittsburgh has the defense, but they're in a much tougher division. So I'm personally going to go ahead and say T-E-N. Fishing life, Mike, what up, my dude? Who do you think will be a be the surprise player to fall out of the first round? Good question. Surprise player to fall out of the first round. This might be an unpopular opinion. I'm going to go with Drake London, the receiver from USC. He's really talented, but has already had some injury issues that I know some NFL scouts are a little bit weary about. So if I know some of these other uh, wide receivers are really talented and I could take them in the first round, I'll say Drake London, but that would be a big-time surprise. NFL Daily is now also on Rumble. Exclusive content, more videos, and, of course, stuff we post here on YouTube is also available on Rumble. We try to dominate that platform. Rumble.com slash NFL Daily. DG Sports Talk, are y'all hiring? That is above my pay, my pay grade, my friend. But to answer your question on Pierre Strong, I just finished up the other night, so let me read off from my scouting report here. Pierre Strong, 5'11 and change, 202, uh, zone rushing scheme, uh, sleeper. I, I wish he played FBS, I thought he but he tested great with elite production at South Dakota State. Made some guys miss. Big play threat, 10 rush touchdowns of 50 plus yards. Drops are an issue, and they were an issue at South Dakota State for this past year against just 22 catches. I think he's a bit more like build up straight line speed than big time explosion, which is probably fine. My my question mark is, is he Elijah Mitchell? I think it's a good player comparison. Or on the downside, is he Darrington Evans? Fourth round, you could have a sleeper on your hands there. Now, if you want daily NFL videos and the 2022 NFL Draft Live, you're at the right spot. Hit that big red button and subscribe, youtube.com slash chat sports TV. Alex LA, why is Kayvon Thibodeau falling down boards? It's a good question. Um, I will not speak for myself because I like Thibodeau a lot. I want to make that clear. But the reports and buzz and whispers and claims out there are kind of as follows here. Uh, he's not a great bender. It's true. He doesn't have a great bend. Uh, he's not a great athlete. False. Not as big as we thought. Kind of true. Uh, but also, like, you should have known that because the numbers were out there for a while here, like, from a team perspective. Uh, he's got an ego. Sure. But also, like, you know, he's a top 10 pick. Like, of course he has an ego. It's not a bad thing. Uh, he's got focus issues. He cares about his brand. And that's what annoys me the most. This, like, Thibodeau doesn't love football. We've heard that before with other top Oregon prospects. Justin Herbert doesn't love football. He's too smart. Real thing. Panay Sewell, immature with no specifications as to why. That narrative happens a lot with Oregon guys. And it's 0 for 2 with Sewell and and uh, and Herbert so far. And I don't get why that happens just for them. It doesn't make any sense. And it's really weird to see the Thibodeau cares too much about his brand when Aiden Hutchinson has a show already with PFF. Like that narrative disconnect doesn't make sense to me. It's really weird. I think Thibodeau should probably pick number two. If I were the Lions and I missed out on, on Hamilton, I'm not going to go safety in round one, which, okay, I get positional value. I would take Thibodeau. The Texans at three. The Jets at four. The Giants at five. Should all strongly consider Kayvon Thibodeau. The Giants at seven. Falcons eight. Seahawks nine. Like, if he gets out of the top ten, maybe then the NFL is, is right. Maybe then there is the real stuff. They're concerned about Justin Gilbert all over again. For you Browns fans, you know that one. And maybe we're wrong. It's tough to know, but the NFL isn't always right on those things. And it's just the narrative is weird uh, for around Kayvon Thibodeau, especially with the Oregon stuff being similar in the past. And I like him a lot. Top five guy for me. I, I take him in a heartbeat. So what do you think? Who will draft Kayvon Thibodeau this year? Pin comment on today's video. If the ad break comes, you know the drill. Head down there. Let me know who you think will draft Kayvon Thibodeau in round one of this year's class. All right, y'all. So we're talking about cornerbacks. How many corners get drafted in round one? 
usually, and I, I try to diagnose each position by my top players, I could see four cornerbacks going in round one. I would probably set it. I'd probably set the over-under at four and a half, though that seems high, maybe three and a half, because I see Stingley, I see Sauce, and I see Trent McDuffie all going in round one. And then after that, it does get a little bit interesting. So let's say three and a half. That would be the over-under. Let me know how many corners get drafted in the first round of the 2022 NFL Draft.